This is our solar system, although not to scale, simulated using OpenGL in C++. Gravity is one of those things that most people believe they understand, however, I can almost promise that you probably don't. And in this video, I hope to complete your understanding by using real physics equations and some coding magic to simulate objects in space. To start, I initialize OpenGL and create a simple window. Now, like almost everything in low-level programming, simplicity is nowhere to be found. Like most 3D engines, OpenGL renders objects in smaller, triangular parts. So to create a circle, we need to take in the position, radius, and resolution of a circle. Then, starting with the center, we can create a list of vertices that form the shape of a circle around the center using basic trigonometric functions. From this, OpenGL will render these vertices as separate triangles that form the shape of a circle. Isn't that neat? Now to move the circle down, or at all for this matter, we can simply just put all this code into a draw circle function and create a position vector, which can, in the while loop, edit the center position of the circle and move it down very slowly. This is called velocity, a change in position over a change in time. But gravity isn't a velocity, it's an acceleration force. On Earth, it's 9.81 meters per second squared, meaning every second your velocity is increasing by 9.81. So instead of updating our position directly, we need to create a velocity vector that stores the current velocity. And every frame we can increase the velocity in the y-axis by 9.81. As you can see, this is much more realistic. Adding a simple border collision function, and this is a bouncy ball. Isn't that neat? Now, let's get to the juicy part. Instead of simulating objects on Earth, I want to simulate objects in space. Gravity is the pull factor of large masses towards each other. But for that, we need more than one mass. So let's create an objects class where we can store the position, velocity, and an acceleration and update position function, along with the draw circle function from before. Then we can create multiple objects in an objects list and iterate over these objects in the while loop. We can call their draw function and update position function and... Voila! Now we have more than one object in our scene. Now, as I said before, gravity is the pull factor between two or more masses towards each other. Anything with mass in our universe has this factor. Even you, dear friend, with your mass, have an astronomically tiny pull on the women around you. Newton's equations tell us exactly how much this pull factor is. It's the mass of the two objects times the gravitational constant divided by the distance squared. This gives us the g-force, and using Newton's second law, we can convert this directly into acceleration. In the objects class, we can give each object a mass. Let's start with 735 quintillion kilos, just about the mass of our moon. Then, in our while loop, we can calculate the gravity of each object on each other, and use the accelerate method, which is in each object, to accelerate them. And that should be it. Now here we have gravity. Isn't that neat? If we initialize each object with a bit of velocity, we get a bit of an orbit going. But now that this simulation is somewhat working, let's delete everything and start from ground zero with 3D. Now 3D rendering introduces a few things. Firstly, we need a camera with an FOV position and direction. Second, you need a shader program with vertex array objects and vertex buffer objects. Don't worry though, all you need to know is magic, 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 and it works. Well, sort of. A circle is a 2D object. A sphere is a 3D object. Just like before, we need to figure out a way to turn a sphere into a bunch of triangles that can actually be rendered. And it's actually pretty cool how this is done. You start with two values, theta and pi. Theta goes from 0 to 180 degrees, and pi goes from 0 to 360 degrees. Theta is essentially the longitude of the circle, and pi is the latitude. Then, iterating over the circle with longitude and latitude, we get four values. Theta, theta plus 1, pi, and pi plus 1. That means for every point in the circle which we iterate over, we create a bit of a quadrilateral around the sphere. And if we do this for every point on our sphere, we get a sphere. A quadrilateral can easily be rendered as two triangles. And if we put them in consecutive order into a list of vertices, we get a sphere. A sphere. And it's a very good sphere. Isn't that neat? Everything else in our simulation can be pretty easily converted. And we have 3D gravity. Here is a 3D orbit. Experimenting around a bit, it's pretty cool how this extra dimension affects the objects and their orbits. But now, let's get into the next step of the video, and to do this, we need to take a bit of a step back. I mentioned before that gravity is the pull factor of masses towards each other. This is not accurate today. It was until Einstein's theory of relativity. Contrary to common belief and what scientists had thought for centuries prior to Einstein, gravity isn't a force at all. When you stand still, the ground pushes you up. This is called the normal force, and it stops you from following 
the natural curvature of space-time towards Earth's center. According to Einstein, gravity is a phenomenon of matter curving space-time. This feels like a force, but Einstein is flipping the script. A falling person feels nothing and is truly inertial or free from any forces. To them, you are accelerating upwards. Think about it, right now, you feel weight of yourself. But if you were falling, you wouldn't feel any weight. That's because you would be an inertial viewer, someone that experiences no forces and is following the natural curvature of space-time. Forces, like the normal force, Force only act to resist this path of the geometry of space-time, like the ground halting your fall. Space tells matter how to move, matter tells space how to curve. In our simulation, I want to now simulate the curvature of space-time using a grid. This grid will show the natural curvature of space-time from the matter and how the objects are accelerating towards each other. Let's start by rendering this grid. I'll skip the boring parts, but essentially we create another list of vertices and use lines to create this simple grid level with all the planets. Now, most simulations of this space-time grid use a 2D grid of a flam paraboloid, a shape that represents the curvature of space-time. I'd actually attempted to work with 3D grids, and this is my best attempt. This isn't that bad, but it actually isn't that accurate. And this is also a very generous example. This is what most of my attempts looked like. So I opted to go for the 2D approach. For a 2D grid, I could keep the X and Z coordinates the same. And for the Y coordinate, I could use this formula. This is the formula for the fan paraboloid, a shape which most gravity simulations use. This worked, and it worked pretty well almost instantly. Now, it's very buggy, and it kind of blows up if the masses are too large. But scaled down, and I could actually get a simulation of the orbits of our very own solar system. Creating a sun, earth, moon, put some Mars and Jupiter, and I experimented with the velocities to get a stable orbit, right? And here is the final product. I'd also added a function where I can spawn objects in just to see how, say, another sun could, would affect the orbits of our planets. Then, I also experimented with simple black holes. Increasing the density enough, we could create tiny objects with massive masses. Here's a simulation of what the closest black hole to us would look like around our sun. That is our sun orbiting this tiny object you can't even see. If we scale this object by about a quintillion times, this is what it looks like. Black holes are incredible, and actually were the inspiration for me creating this project. My long-term plan is to be able to simulate a black hole, so if you'd like to see that, please let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like and watch it twice. Otherwise, thanks for watching.